So this is our day three on learning um, API testing. And uh, we will use Postman today to go ahead with our practicals, okay? So we have already talked about uh, why API testing is important, what we do generally and how to do that thing. When we say how to do that thing, there are a lot of things which is involved here, okay? So that that thing we'll see through practical, okay? So we have we have taken this website, reqres.in, this particular website for our practicals, okay? So I'm opening the same website now. If you see this website, they have provided us this as a mock API to, to do some kind of testing, okay? And as I said uh, yesterday that we can do certain operations. These are called methods, right? These are called methods. So let's understand about get, post, put, patch, and delete today. So there are methods. So we'll so our agenda today is talk about method HTTP methods. So one of them is get. Get is as the name itself is get to get data from API services. Okay. So when we say get, it's basically you want to get the data from the API server. And API server generally interacts with the database. If there is database involved, it gets the data from the database, okay? So get is to get the data, simple. So example of get can be get user detail, you know, um, anything, anything which you see, let's say when you open a website, Let's assume you open uh, Amazon.in, okay? And this is user interface, but in the API also, you can call this thing, right? And when you search T-shirt for men, something like this, right? In the background, what happens is, see here, if you check in the URL, if you check in the URL, it is changed, right? It's saying Amazon.in slash S question mark, K is equals to T plus shirt plus for men, something like that. Plus is for spaces here and something else is happening. So what is happening in the background is it calls its own API. And then once it gets the data, it represents in the HTML format properly, putting the data in a you know proper way here. But in the background, it is getting data from the database. Okay, through API calls. So this call we can make. I'm just let's check. Can we do this call uh, here in Postman? So I have opened Postman, and you should also open Postman application tool at your end. If you have not installed, it's fine. You just see what we are doing today. If you have installed, then you should try the practical here. So I am clicking on this plus icon and I am putting the same URL here and I'm saying send. So this is uh, doing something. I don't know what it is doing, but the same thing which, you know, the detail, the, uh, if I right click here, you can do view page source. So you get the HTML data, correct? for this particular website. So basically, when you are hitting it at Postman, it is getting all those things in Postman also, okay? As a reply, as a response. But this is not the way to do API testing, okay? When we do API testing, we don't uh, open the user interface at all, right? We should have a bit of knowledge about how API works, what are the data we will get, how we will validate those things, right? 
So I was talking about get. Get is all about getting something. So it should be getting, getting something, something predefined, right? It should be predefined. It's not like random thing you will get. Okay. You should know what, what is your application? Is it related to HR operations? So you will get employee data, leave, leave data, right? All those things. Is it related to uh, share market or banking? So when you do, do get, you will get, you know, the, the share details, right? If you, if it is related to e-commerce, then probably you will get product data, right? Those things. Then what is post? There is a method called post. Post, post is about creating data or resource okay. so post is about creating something so for example i want to create a new user so even without opening the user interface you can directly hit api and create the user okay what are the other methods we have put patch delete so what is put put is to update the update detail Patch is also for update. We'll talk about difference between these two in coming sessions, not today. And delete is delete data. Delete is deleting something. Right? The name itself is delete. So you want to delete data. It's very simple. So let's see the example of get quickly, which we did yesterday also. But uh, to get familiar with this kind, this website. This API. So get you can use to get you know list of users if you want to see. You can simply call uh, get. Okay. So I can call request dot in in the postman. I'll go there and I'll create a new request and I will say request.in slash uh, api slash users okay api slash users this will give me all the users okay and if you want to get from a particular page right so there are users on different pages it look it looks like this so anyways i hit simple I'll hit all the users. So I'll say send. So this is interacting with the server now. So what it is showing me that in the by default, it is showing for the page one. Okay, there is per page six data, total 12 employees present, something like that. It is showing me some detail. So let me copy this in notepad. So things will be clear. What response I'm getting. So this is some response coming and uh, this is JSON response. Okay. And let's understand what is JSON here. Here, if you see, everything is under curly bracket, right? A parent uh, node is started and then there are elements, page one per page six, total 12, total pages two, data something. So this is the data which is coming through API call. Okay, so there is ID one whose name is this, first name is this, last name is this, uh, avatar is something, and then ID number two, and then their detail, ID three, ID four, five, six. And it is showing you the detail of first, from the first page basically, right? So if you want to get the data from another page, probably you have to write it like question mark page is equals to two. So let's understand what it is. So what they are saying after the users, you can say question mark page is equals to two. Okay. And now it will show you the detail from the page number two. So if you see response is coming here at the down, and it is showing page two and then from id number seven to i guess id number 12 it will show the detail okay it's like this 
Now, what is this page is equals to two question mark. So these are called query parameters. So whenever you see question mark, right? And some parameter is equal, some value, some, some keyword is equals to some value. So these are called query parameters. And you can set the parameters here. See here, there is a param option. Let me delete this page is equals to two. Now, if you see here, query parameters, key and value is here. So I can write it here, uh, page, E-A-G-E, -E, and the value is two. See here, automatically this uh, URI is changing, correct? So now if I do a send, I will get the details. Same thing, you can try at your end also in the postman. I'm giving you this. Uh, detail in chat window also. So I'm hitting it, I'm getting this detail. And what is the my validation point? My validation is um, this 200 OK is coming. 200 OK means my request is successful. Um, if you are checking some performance for an API, you can see, okay, 32 milliseconds it's taking. Um, that's it. Sometimes as an API test engineer, you have to check uh, whether you are passing the proper uh, request header, whether you are getting the uh, proper response header is coming or not, right? Those things. If you want to save this response, there is an option here, save response. And the whole response, the JSON response, you can save it in your system. Okay, it's like this. So that's it about get request. There are a lot of other things also related to authorization, what I have to put in body, what is prerequisite, what is test, what is setting. We'll do these things probably tomorrow. We are doing very simple examples today. Second thing, let's create a new user. So as per the uh, document here, we can create also users, right? So these are all get, 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 get. You can try these examples, okay? I want to create a new user. So this is post example. So in the post example, what they are saying is the request will be something like this. Let me copy it. So what they are saying, if you want to create a new user, you can create it but you have to use a proper format so let's create it so what they're saying you can create by passing the name and job okay and what about okay name and job yeah yeah name and job you have to pass so name let's create something here first so i'm putting testology underscore nitesh and job is part-time trainer <laughs> okay and if you see here this is called uh, property and this is value and then there is a comma and then next value is job and something now the question is who will define what are the things user can add right so that again is related to what are the fields available to be added in your system. So you have to talk with your business analyst. You have to talk with whoever is giving you the requirement to check the APIs. As an API test engineer, you should be good on uh, writing queries also. Okay. So you should um, check in your... Uh, tables also when there is a new user created from the user interface. So I'll repeat what I'm saying. See, there are two ways to create a user. Let's say you have UI also there. You fill a form. Let's assume you are filling a form. And once you click on a uh, submit button, the user is created. Okay. And you are able to see in user in interface that some new user is created with different kind of fields like first name, last name. There are some 
mandatory fields there are some optional fields right so as a test engineer i should know when i am filling a form in the user interface and when i click on the submit what happens in the background so you should go to your database you should you should get the access of the database from your it team let's say if you are able to get it and check when you created the user, what, what happened to the database? In what table something is updated, right? This will give you more insight. In the same way, without opening the UI also, you can create the user. If your system is related to creating user and updating it, okay? So here, we'll call an API to create the user. So but the data we will pass in this format. So if you're using REST API, you have to pass your data in some particular format. One of the format is JSON format, okay? So let's create. So let's create a new request. So you can click on this plus icon and uh, let's see the example. Here it's saying if you want to create the user, you have to say request.in slash api slash users okay first of all make it post and here we'll say uh yes request api slash users and here if you see there is a body option and here you should select uh, raw okay we are passing raw data so there are a lot of options when you put in the body as a request. So there is none form data x hyphen www for ur le and co data binary data graph ql data. The common thing when you are passing through JSON is raw data. So let me show you here. So I want to create a user with the name this and job this that's it as of now no authentication is required sometimes when you do api um, testing in real world actually when you do api testing you should have one auth key so that the server will authenticate first that okay you are an authenticated user who want to do some kind of testing okay so, or you want to check the APIs itself. So, as of now, it is not involved. We are using some test APIs. Okay. Now, if I click on send, it should create a new user. It is taking some time, but it's fine. Let me check what has happened because maybe a lot of people are using it. Okay, we got the response. It's saying 201 created. So keep in mind that when you do post, when you do post call, so when you do get, generally the response code will be 200 okay. If everything is working fine, right? When you are doing a post, generally you will get a response like, 201 created okay so we have 201 as a response code that means it's working fine in the response i am getting something it's saying that in the response i am getting something like this this was my request so my request is this let me put it properly that was my request body and i got the response response something like this okay so what in the response it is saying that okay your user is created the id is this and you created this at this particular time okay don't worry about this time zone which it is showing don't worry about it it is based on um, maybe my post main installation or 
may be wherever the server is located okay from their time zone it's coming but we got a new id that 392 user is created now the question is we have to cross check whether this user is actually created or not so you can again go to get user uh we created one request right getting the user detail get user yeah this one so if i simply do get user so my user should be the last one right it is just a mock api so this will not show you okay this is not going to show you but in their database they have created as of now what they are doing you know they are showing just 12 users because of some reason because you know maybe everyone is using it so they don't want to you know create thousands of users otherwise what will happen is their database will be flooded with the users details correct so as of now let's understand that our our test is successful we got the response that um, user is created where was that post request, request right we did this thing and we got the response also you can try at your end so you have to change the name and uh, let's post it again let's post the same thing again let's see what is the response and i'll, I'll tell you what, ideally what should happen so i am doing the same kind of post again and this time it is creating a new id 620 that means what it is doing is it is always creating the new user right? irrespective of whether you are passing the same name um, and job right so it is not doing any check basically when you are whenever you are doing a post it's creating a new user that's perfectly fine we don't worry about that and let's see some more examples so this is about post uh, do we have example for put? Yes. So put is to update the detail. Put is to update the detail. Let's say I want to update the detail of user ID 2. Okay. Let's see who is the user ID 2 first. Let me check. So if I say users slash 2. Okay. What is? Okay. So slash 2 means you are passing a parameter, but in the path itself. Right. So it is it is based on um, how your API works, right? You have to read your API documentation. If they say that you can do a slash and then pass ID, that is fine. Maybe in some um, API, they will say, no, no, you have to pass it like this. ID is supposed to be something like this. As of now, it's not like this as, as per their documentation. When you do, it will get you the detail of user number two. Okay. So user ID two is Janet Weaver, uh, some name. And I want to update the detail of this ID two. I want to change the first name as testing. Let's say. Okay. So how to do that? So what they are suggesting is uh, you can do that by so there is a put example so in the put example they are saying that same thing how you are doing post in the same way you can do put so let me copy this and uh, let's create a new request so we'll say new request here we will select put here we will say request users uh, slash two and uh, in the body we'll select raw and we'll say name as testing don't do at your end let me try first job also i want to change so i'll say job is fired okay no job so put and then click on send send button is to uh, do you know sending the request you want to send this request so it's saying updated 200 okay 
So when you do put also, you get 200 OK, right? Not a, not a hard rule, but you can get it. So 200 OK is, means it's successful. Successful. But you have to check the message also. So it's saying me that uh, you are, have updated this. Now get that user quickly. User number two, let's check. So it is showing me Janet. Still, it is showing me Janet, right? But it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So ideally, what should have happened? Ideally, ideally, this ID email should have been changed, right? Let's try that again. Can we change the email? Let's, let's try. Uh, changing the emails. Okay. So we will say, we will say here another field. Let me say email colon and test at the rate test.com. Let's get all detail first for that. This user basically. Email is this, first name is this, last name is this. Let me copy this. And this uh, avatar is fine. So let me go to put. And here in the body, I will use the same thing. Let's try that. Email. So I want to change it. Test at the rate. Test. First name is also, let's say testing. Last name is also last name test. And avatar, let's let's say we want to put the same. Okay. For the user ID too, I want to put this detail. If I click on send, it is showing me updated. And let's get that user quickly. If I click on send, no, it's not updating. What what should happen? Ideally, what should happen? Ideally. It should say once I'll update it, it should say that with the new user. It's same as updating uh, the database. Have you have you run the update query in your system many times? So update queries are like this. Update um, then table name, right? So you say update user set um, email is equals to something, let's say test at the rate test.com, uh, where user ID is equals to two, right? So basically when you are running this query, uh, we are, you, when you do put request, something like this, something like this, in the background, basically it is updating whatever you are saying here for a particular user, for a particular user, let's say user ID two, you want to change something. It is saying me updated, but basically it is not showing me the updated detail. Ideally, it should show me that updated detail. So in SQL, in database, you have, what you do, you update, and then you again do select star from user. You do it like this, right? To check whether actually the email is changed or not. So you say select star from user where user underscore ID is equals to if there is a table in the database named user. Okay. Then another thing here is patch. So what is patch then? Patch you use to again update the detail, but there you don't have to mention all other fields okay in the patch basically when you do put you have to provide all mandatory fields right for any user but when you use patch you don't have to provide all everything like email first name so whatever you want to change so you don't have to put all all these things first name and last name let's say you don't want to update this thing you just want to update email that is possible through patch okay and then delete what is delete then let's 
try that. So delete, you can simply call by saying uh, you want to delete this. So this is a very simple API. Let me save this. How to save this? You can click on save and you can put the request name as uh, update user. Update user. You want to save it under a collection to so save it. So see how good it is looking. You are you have created a test case for getting the user detail, creating the user detail, updating the user. Now we will create for delete the user. So that is again request.in user slash two. So this will delete the user, right? So you have to select it from here, delete, and uh, just send it. Nothing you have to do. So once I did it, it is showing me nothing. It is saying 204 no contained. So it's saying the server successfully processed the request, but is not returning any content. That's fine. So it's up to the how how the API is developed, how developers has developed it, what they want to show when you are calling the delete, right? The response is totally depend on how developers want to put the response for the APIs, correct? So another example is, when you are doing Amazon, you are hitting it, right? And when you click on, uh, let's say best sellers, right? So what are the things will be available here? It is based on some background code, right? They want to show you based on some ranking or best seller items, right? In the same way, it is again related to some business logic that when you're doing a delete, they they don't want to show you anything. If they just want to say that, okay, your response code is 204 and you don't want to show any content, but your request is successful. It's like this, okay? Ideally, ideally, right? What should happen is it should show me a message that uh, user deleted, something like this. So we are going to take another um, very good, um api testing website mm -hmm. there also you can practice and understand um something similar some similar things what we are doing here you can do there also okay but it's this one is a good one very basic one this request.in to understand that these are the things possible and in different ways you can do it it's like this okay so this is some register API, which registers the email and password. Wow. So you can register your email and password. Great. For a particular email. And you have to provide the password. In the response, it will show you your ID and your token. Great. So it shows you the token also, which you can use for further use. It's like this, okay? So there are a lot of things you have to understand, like uh, what are the uh, you know, different kind of requests available here. I am checking some questions from the chat window. If I can take as of now, I'll take those questions. Otherwise, we'll just keep a note. Um, somebody has asked difference between put and patch. So put is basically to update the detail, right? Where you have to pass all the fields again along with what you want to update. Whereas in patch, you can update the detail without passing other, other details of that resource. Okay. For patch, we'll do more, more practical, more examples. Don't worry. This particular request.in is a very simple one. 
uh, where you have very limited thing to check. So somebody is saying, can we use either of the uh, thing for uh, update the database, update, insert the data? In? So let's understand, put and post, they do not insert the data, they update the data, right? To insert the data, you have to use, sorry, sorry, put and post, post you can use for inserting the data. Generally put is used for update the data, put and patch. Okay. Fine. 